The geomagnetic field on Earth prevents energetic particles such as galactic cosmic rays from directly interacting with the Earth's atmosphere. And we're looking at an artist representation of that. Now, a new paper coming out sheds light on the severity of geomagnetic excursions over the last 100,000 years. And it was published on the 22nd of July, 2022. Now, the geomagnetic field is not static, but constantly changing. And over the last 100,000 years, several geomagnetic excursions have occurred. During these geomagnetic field excursions, the field strength is significantly decreased and the field morphology is strongly influenced by the non-dipole components. And at the same time, more cosmic ray particles can access the Earth's atmosphere. Paleomagnetic field models have provided a global view of the long-term geomagnetic field evolution. However, with individual spatial and temporal resolution and uncertainties, in this video, we are going to go over the geomagnetic shielding effects over the last 100,000 years and why they may or may not be significant. Now, we all know that Earth's magnetosphere is protecting our planet from harmful space energy. This isn't a guess. This is due to decades of study on what's going on, as well as spacecraft flying around the planet, which is not flat, to detect these field lines. Now, we'll get to this graph in just a moment. But the, this paper that just came out, what it does is it sheds some light on the severity of these geomagnetic excursions through time. And so we're going to look up at the blow. This is the graph that comes from the paper. But first, we want to bring you up to speed on what all of these different colors mean. The red line in the graph is the model, which is not the real data or the proxy data. The real data comes from blue, black, and gray. But they all clearly show a very large impact during the LeChamp excursion 41,000 years ago. So here's that overlay. The real data is blue, gray, and black, and the model is in red. And what we can all see if we come over to the right at the present time is a rapid drop down in the blue data set, an impressive drop down in the gray data set. The gray data set has us below a V, ADM, or a magnetic field intensity of less than five. Now, once you go below four, bad things happen. And we are, look at the angle of this gray. Within just a matter of moments, we should be dropping down into nothingness. Even the model predicts a rapid drop down. Look at the red line to the right of the screen. Straight down. And when we have straight down, bad things happen. Like in the LeChamp, where the last mass extinction occurred, there was also a mass extinction 12,900 years ago, but it barely shows up in the graph as far as field intensity. So the magnetic field was not the extinction provider during the Younger Dryas event. Definitely, the magnetic excursion created the extinction event during the LeChamp. And that is what we want to glean from this podcast. Now, here's some more of the data set coming out from the paper. And they have these different... Uh, graphing techniques to use the proxy data of the field intensity to make a very visual impression of what is significant as far as magnetic excursions.
And this is the last 100,000 years. So we can see there was a significant magnetic excursion 41,000 years ago, another one about 59,000 years ago, and something around 66,000 years ago. These are the three biggest magnetic excursions in the last 100,000 years. Almost nothing showing up during the Younger Dryas. None whatsoever. So we have one, two, three big booms in the last 100,000 years. And anyone claiming there's some kind of a standard cycle to these excursions, just based on this data set, has proven themselves incorrect. But I do digress. There actually is a small drop down here, but it has nothing to do with the Younger Dryas event. It has to do with another event. And we'll get to that. This happened during the Holocene, and it's this drop down right here about 8,500 years ago. When the temperature dropped four degrees in a geologic instant and then recovered. So the next step is to take the geomagnetic field intensity over the last 100,000 years, which only shows these three significant events, and to overlay that with temperature. Now, these three events, remember, happen at 41,000, 59,000, and 66,000 years ago. So if we look at the temperature proxy at 41,000 years ago, there is a drop down in temperature right here. This is the Lechamp magnetic excursion, which is also correlated to a rapid decrease in temperature on Earth. And the only mass extinction other than the Younger Dryas event in the entire 100,000 years. Now, aboriginals arrive in Australia around the same time of that 66,000-year event. Hmm. And there was a 59,000-year event here, all in this low temperature time. So all of these low temps are associated with two very large magnetic excursions as well as this drop down. But none of these other temperature fluctuations have anything to do with magnetic excursions. So based on what I've just shown you, we can conclude that there is something independent that is causing the temperature to fluctuate so rapidly on Earth. We're talking 4 degrees C, and these are the Danskard Erschger cycles that you've heard so much about. That's, these are the Danskard Erschger cycles. And so something is afoot because the Danskard Erschger cycle is not caused by the magnetic field. It's caused by the sun. Maybe a bond cycle or another solar cycle we're unaware of. But nowhere in here do we see evidence of a standard occurring event forced by something referred to as the galactic current sheet. It just doesn't exist here. Nor does it exist here in the magnetic data. So it's hit or miss if a magnetic excursion is going to cause mass extinction like it did back in 41,000 years ago during the Lechamp excursion, which caused the extinction of many hominids, including Neanderthals. So there's much more work to be done. These approximately 1,000-year up and downs, the danskard Erschger cycles, are very visible in the Holocene warm. And it's also very apparent that most of the last 10,000 years were warmer than today. But that's not what the mainstream says or tells us or what we hear in and out day after day on that propaganda machine. Now, here are the two papers that came up with the data sets High-resolution global paleo-intensity stack since 75,000 years ago. This is the GLOPUS 75 data. And this is the, the other data set that we're using on that initial graph here. This is SINT 2000 and the paper. Relative paleo-intensity in the latest Pleistocene from 10 to 45,000 kiloyears and implications for deglacial atmospheric radiocarbon. Now, I think we can glean a few things from this chart. No other place do we see gray 
dropping down like this, except for during the Le Champ and during those 60,000 year events. The gray data set is a more smooth value, but what's happening now is pales in comparison to any of the other graph in the last 100,000 years. So this magnetic excursion based on the gray data set is going to be a doozy. And based on the red line, the model, most of the model angles are smooth and angular. Very few are vertical like the LeChamp, except the one that is pictured here on the right of the screen, the one we're living in. It's as vertical as the Younger Dryas drop down, the LeChamp, or any other. This might be the Pringle Falls. I need to get my data up. But what I'm showing you here is there is no pervasive cycle of magnetic excursion. They seem to be quite random. The last major one was 41,000 years ago. There have been some fluctuations since then especially during the Younger Dryas event here from 15,000 to about 9,000 years ago. There's a huge drop down in the field strength, but it did recover. And then the data set is lost because the ice data set is lost. But there is no really standard clock cycle we're looking at here as far as magnetic excursions. Also, there is no evidence that the crust is slipping or the sun is outbursting or any of that based on the data. So what we want to provide you here with is a clear data set of the geomagnetic field intensity for the last 100,000 years to show you something quite obvious, that this is the most significant perturbation in the entire data set, and this also corresponds to the end of Neanderthals and many other mammals on Earth, and a rebirth of new species in the years following. And if we come over here to look at a significant down drop for the Younger Dryas, we see very little. We see this drop down in the black graph, which begins the event. So this is like the first Dryas, then the Younger Dryas, or the second Dryas, then the Younger Dryas. Don't quote me on any of that. But what we do see on the graph is a major rapid reduction in the model here, corresponding with the gray data set which all looks very similar to the magnetic excursion happening back at the Le Champ. Albeit we're starting slightly higher at VADM 10 to the 22nd at a level of 10-ish. And now has to drop down from there. And we are now sitting at about 8 according to the model, less than 5 according to the gray data set. So until these graphs start going upwards, it's all the way down till the end of the event, which is the magnetic excursion you're living and you need to prepare for. Because what happens is a slow, cumulative unraveling of everything on Earth. Weather systems unravel. Major flooding events, major drought events, catastrophic snow, blizzards, infrastructure topples, empires end, they fail. And just like back 41,000 years ago, when we were in the Stone Age, we will get knocked back into the Stone Age. And that's why we're here to prepare you and not scare you. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. I hope you got something out of the video. Please answer your question, ask your questions below and I will happily answer them. We implore all of you to become a Patreon of our work and support the work we're doing. Without our Patreons, we can't provide this amount, this level of content that we've been doing for the last several weeks. If you don't have money and you can't support us, don't. You can support us in different ways. You can be a hero and share this video. Be safe. We love you.
And that's a boom.